Nitesh, thank you so much for uh, for making time to join us uh, on a on a relatively short notice. We're very happy to have you. Um, we like to talk to people like yourselves, who have two things minimum. Uh, you've had the courage to do something that is not common, uh, and there are many things uncommon about you. Camel is probably the smallest part of the uncommon part. You were a civil engineer, and now you're a camel farmer. So there are many things uncommon about that. And the camel milk in itself is uncommon. Right? So I think that's first thing is you have the courage to do something like this. And the second is you are fairly young, and I must admit that my personal life. And when I say my personal life, I all I do is intellectual work um, has changed dramatically since I started paying attention to what young people like you are doing. Like previously, I was a product of my own generation, right? Which is where we would say, well, you know, you have to put 10 years and then I will listen to what you have to say. Uh, and I was wrong, dramatically wrong, because the moment I changed that attitude, my learning went up 10x. Um, so that's a, that's those are the two things that excited us to talk to you about you. So I will stop talking. What I will only say is that the way we like to do these conversations is it's, is we, it's more about getting to know you and you know your motivation and what you were thinking. Because um, that then brings the passion of the idea out, right? So what we like to do is go a little back in the past, come to the present, and then we look future. So, so start with telling us a little bit about yourself. Is, you know, how does a civil engineer from Punjab Engineering College, like what were you thinking, if you were thinking, and then how do you get from there to here? So give us some, give us a little bit of you know your life journey so that we get to know you a bit. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks first of all for having me here and uh, the work what you guys are doing, like uh, basically giving a platform to people like us to uh, share their experiences so that uh, it might uh, help others also. It might motivate others. <laughs> And uh, like uh, about us, the journey which you said, like from engineer, civil engineer to camel milk, it was it was a very I would say uh, different. But uh, yeah, we have uh, enjoyed. I have enjoyed the both aspect of from the both sides actually. See, I, I tell you what in civil engineering or in the engineering what we study, it's it's like. Uh, Engineering is not at all about engineering. It's about you know dealing with people and situations. Correct. In an engineering right. college, when right. you are uh, living in a, a hostel, so you know you learn how to live with different kind of people, different right. kind of situations, how to work in pressures and those kind of things. And uh, after that, uh, like when I was in civil engineering thing, I was like uh, as a site engineer. So what happens in civil engineering, and especially in the side job, is that you are dealing with the people from uh, uh, labor class to like managers and GMs. So that gives you a very uh, broader, you know, understanding about how people uh, they think, how they uh, perform, what works well with the say a uh, truck driver, and what works with a general manager how to deal with the clients those kind of things were there and uh, i remember uh, there was in final year of our college so our uh, professor he had more confidence in uh, what i might do in future because i come from a Mar uh, marwadi family yeah. and uh, in a whole class of i think 200 students and he just uh, he said ki uh, he was Talking about something else and said that Marwadi ke bacha paida hota hi chhay saal ka hoga to bolle papa dhanda karna. So and then he uh, pointed out, I mean, called out my name and said that kya rati sahi kya raha na. <laughs> so uh, that was then like uh, the spark was already there and he kind of uh, uh, put it out in front of everybody and I knew that maybe sometime after uh, after few years. I will also be doing something of my own to start something from scratch. And uh, then like I got placed from my college in a reputed company. I went to different places like uh, yeah. in Assam, then uh, Nagpur, and then I yeah. was for one year I was in Gurgaon. And that was the time when uh, me and my friends were having discussion like what could be the next big thing and all. Then this camel milk idea came up. 
and uh, you know i since i come from bikaner region everybody was asking me to take the lead so we did some little uh, i would say homework or studies but yeah. uh, after that uh, i got an opportunity from in a company in myanmar from a company okay. in myanmar my okay. senior was there so uh, i went over there i was there for 5 6 months and uh, i was there as a construction manager so uh, over there i was uh, when i was working over there i realized that this is not the future which uh, i am looking for yeah i was looking for so i re researched the subject and uh, thought it's worth a shot so when when i was doing that uh, at that point of time i made a list of pros and cons like what if things can uh, if things go wrong and what could Perfect. be the worst case scenario and all those kind of things and this so, is this is where what you said initially that engineering what it really teaches us is not nuts and bolts as much as it teaches us problem solving right so now you are making a life decision and you're making a list of pros and cons right i mean that yeah. only i would argue any common sense person would do it but engineering we are taught common sense so that's what you are doing perfect keep going love it june 2015 i left the job over there okay and when i came back unfortunately my other friends got occupied in their own work and none was able to join so um, i have to start i had to start it alone so i Uh, for about 8 to 9 months i was running uh, i would say one man show i used to you know uh, collect uh, the milk means the sourcing of the milk was done and uh, i was delivering uh, i put up my base at uh, means delhi region and uh, i was i was the customer care executive i was the delivery guy i was the uh, operations manager logistics and everything so that i was doing it i remember like traveling in on my bike for about 150 kilometers in a day in between you know whenever the phone was ringing i used to park my bike and to uh, address Thanks the customer that was the time and uh, what uh, uh, what i have learned from my i would say upbringing or those kind of thing that you uh, you have to be your business have to be very sustainable like yeah. uh, if uh, the cost is higher you have to sell it at a high more higher price otherwise it is not going to be a sustainable thing and about the i would say to reduce minimize your costs yes so uh, means like uh, i was running like office and uh, residence from a same place yeah uh, in a very a very small place and my the first thing which I, when i met the broker i told him that jo sabse sasta wo dikha do correct so because to reduce the cost they, i had some savings uh, my whatever it was there that i had put up and uh, but still if you know you you are cutting down on your cost you get a uh, longer run up i would say yeah so hitesh let me uh, interject and take you back a bit and let me ask a question which is so hitesh there is a discovery of camel on camel milk that you friends all did walk us through what were you thinking did you drink too much one night and next day morning you woke up and said i should do camel like talk us about that a bit what no, happened uh, it was not like that it was you know we were brainstorming kind of thing maybe okay. five of us were there and uh, we were brainstorming like uh, the camel milk idea came up there were a couple of more ideas which were there and uh, he it was worth a shot uh, my friend was actually he suggested that for camel milk but uh, yes uh, i was asked to take the lead because because of my geographical background correct correct and uh, means that was there and camel milk because it sounded something new yeah, yeah absolutely something different so that's how we thought like uh, yes we should do it and in fact we coined the brand name we decided over there only but we didn't adwik. first this adwik brand because adwik in sanskrit means uh, unique correct so that is uh, it's fun it's uh, i am finding difficulty to control my own enthusiasm listening to you uh, because i can attest how many times i have been in a situation like this where we think about an idea and then it is so exciting that you are completely consumed 
by the idea, right? So now this brainstorming you guys were doing was what, 2013, 2014-ish? Wow. It was 2014. 2014. So then the year between 2014 and June 2015 when you left the job in Myanmar, what were you doing in the, not what were you doing when in work standpoint, but how were you researching? How were you thinking? How did you keep yourself excited about that idea? Like your friends, of course, they had more, you know, other things, they got distracted, but you didn't. So what captivated your attention? Uh, see, uh, the, the thing was that uh, I actually, I had a uh, more open mind, I would say. Uh, okay. Like uh, I had Clearly. decided, I had decided that I need to uh, move uh, from this thing, what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And then after camel milk, re-researching the subject, like, you know, it was that point of time when uh, uh, in you in this US, people were accepting this kind yeah. of thing. It, yeah. it, it's camel milk, something unique. Even the yeah. autism, it was not yeah. so common. Yeah. And it's actually camel milk is very helpful in autism. From there, it uh, had uh, got a lot of popularity. So that thing was also gaining, uh, you know, popularity across US. So I thought ki in the times to come, in India also it will be there. So after I came there, I not uh, straight away I was not selling camel milk. I spent two three months, uh, you know, meeting doctors, meeting parents, and the like, uh, trying to understand whether this kind of market uh, is really what people need. So you, did, uh, so you did some required. ground level consumer and research first, market feasibility. Yes, yes. Perfect. I have Absolutely. met many dietitians, nutritionists, uh, pediatricians, and uh, autism therapy, uh, uh, these doctors and other people. To uh, and fortunately for me, uh, you know, there were many people. Most of them, you know, rejected this idea, and it was totally ki na camel milk autism, nothing. It's a sham or something like that. But there were few people who actually were aware of this thing, a doctor, uh, a scientist. So that gave me more confidence that yes, first of all, the product has its merits. It's yeah. not something, a bubble kind of thing, which will eventually burst. So that actually increased my confidence. And Hitesh, what's also interesting about what you're saying <clears throat> is from a market standpoint, so we are traders, I'm a trader, uh, we trade uh, commodity markets. Um, it is very, very, in fact, I would say it's even more important to consider the opposing view than your own view. That's the own view we already know because we live in our views. But we need to actually, in fact, in my team, what all of us do is, let's say if I have an idea that we need to buy crude oil, right? I will argue the opposite side, why you should not buy crude oil way more than buying crude oil, even though buying crude oil was my idea, right? Why? Because by considering the opposite uh, side of the view, you are actually understanding or you're getting a deeper understanding of uh, ignorance, risk, things yes. that you haven't considered, which is what you are saying is, you are actually also entertaining the other, uh, the other yes. point of view as well. Yeah, so it gives an opportunity that, you know, people are not aware, which what I learned was people were not even aware. So right. if people are not aware and if we make them aware of this thing, the, if we become the right bridge between the camel milk and the consumers, yeah. the quality thing is being delivered to them every yeah. time at their doorstep. So there is definitely a market. And you see, my, when I started with camel milk, so from the day one, the idea was that we will not, uh, you know, kind of limit ourselves to camels. We are not in the business of uh, camel milk. Rather, I would say uh, naturally healthy foods segment. Good, good. So uh, that that's why our name, the brand name is not uh, having any resemblance to camels. It would have helped us in SEO and other things. But so, Hitesh, uh, Hitesh, think yeah. about it. I'm sorry, I'm interjecting because you are telling me so much and I want to capture this so we don't, we don't lose it. You see, um, very recently, uh, I, I, I read a very interesting piece. And this is where I'm making the connection that how wrong I and people of my generation are. You know, when I was saying that we, never, we didn't listen to young people like you, we just said, no, 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 you spent 10 years. What's the, what's the connection in there? So somebody recently said, um, and I know there's a lot of emotion on this one, but we'll say it anyway. 
is Tesla is a car manufacturing company, right? However, they can become an energy company easily, True. right? But ExxonMobil cannot become a car manufacturer. Yes. Right? So similarly, Google can become a healthcare company, but Pfizer cannot become a search company, right? You are, there's a huge connection between that thinking. It is not an idea, actually. It's a thinking of a new generation. And that's what you are saying, that yes, your starting opportunity was connecting camel milk to the market, but actually what you are in the business of, or what you think your scope is, is healthy natural nutrition to a market that needs healthy natural nutrition. Right? Sure. Brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. Sure. Brilliant. So that keeps you open, right? Phenomenally open. Yes, uh, means uh, anything in the you know foods category, uh, natural and healthy foods. That was the idea, and uh, on these lines only, like uh, we had launched a goat milk vertical. So uh, that this was not uh, you know non-existent uh, in Indian of market. Course. So, so Hitesh, let me ask another question now. Okay, so now you've come back from Myanmar, you've done your research, and you finally your broker, you find a place and you get going on it. What is the first objection that somebody throws at you when you go to collect your milk? So you're going to people who own camels and you go to collect the milk, right? Or you go to purchase the milk, not even collect, but collect the bad milk. You go to talk to them, Ki, I want to set up a network. What is the reception that you get? So uh, I tell you that with, the, uh, with respect to camel milk, five, six years back, uh, even before that, the understanding of the farmers was that uh, you should not sell the milk okay. because it is against their traditions and uh, you know yes. uh, there is a prohibition yes. kind of thing they can yes. give you uh, if you want for a medical need you come there you can have it and uh, they will not charge you means directly that was the idea but uh, you know um, the situation of camels when i came into this field then i when i did my research and all so there was a 20 Three percent official decline in from 2000 to 2010. Okay, uh, that uh, census by data is by government of India. I think few people there are always some uh, neophiliacs in every aspect. Uh, so there were some people who were okay with the camel milk, and uh, initially the quantity was very less. So that was not, I would say, a very big problem for me, but. Uh, Ultimately, it picked up and, you know, after when they see that this person is selling this milk, so maybe I will also try it uh, and check it out, that kind yeah. of thing. And that's how, you know, community comes together and now you are getting good uh, amount of milk. And so basically what you're also saying then is, um, I mean, so when I was studying about camel farmers or camel actually not farmer you don't you do a google search on camel farm and nothing comes up right you have to do camel milk and then many things come up which is kind of nice to me that's like oh this is a category that doesn't exist right in search but what i have exactly as you're saying so i've traveled a lot um, and the people who own camels um, actually have a a very affectionate relationship with those animals and what you just confirmed is when they say, well, if you need something for medicinal purposes, we'll give you some. But, you know, we, this is not for selling. Uh, that is, and, but that is also a, uh, a, uh, a culture that brings the community together to supply you milk, right? I mean, so uh, that is probably also becoming part of your strength, yeah, that you have a community. One, one more thing which has actually helped us, you know, like we were the first movers in the camel milk category for a market which was practically uh, non-existent. Correct. So uh, people, you know, they had supported us and we also tried, we are, I mean, still date and in future also we will keep on, you know, investing in creating more awareness about camel milk. We are trying to do the best we can. And uh, another thing which I felt that, uh, you know, people especially the farmers and all. So they respect if you are, uh, you know, very ethical and you are doing your job properly. Correct. So with us, it, it is that we are uh, not doing any, you know, uh, cash payments until unless the farmer is new and he is not enrolled in, in the banks and all. 
all payment is done directly in the bank accounts of all the farmers so that something and it it has been you know there is no no such period where you know we have delayed it more than a week or 10 days or something like that ki paisa nahi hai the businesses have their ups and downs correct but uh, we have never let them down in the sense ki uh, your payment will be forfeited or you know some kind of uh, dhamkana types of this uh, kind of thing correct. extortion and all that that thing we have never uh, done means like so farmers respect that and it's been month on month year on year we are doing it so that's a relationship which we have built with them yeah. so he does now move to the consumer side when you started to create you basically created the market from scratch or at least the organized market this probably was an unorganized uh, market yes. previously you created an unorganized market meaning you found a uh, storefront or a customer base that you then did a product placement in that customer base now how did you go about doing that now the advantage of course slight advantage and i will not say take your thunder away from you is what we're saying is the tools available to market today are probably much better than 10 years ago like right? people are more media you can use social media, blah, blah 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 thousand things i'm not trying to get into your strategy what i'm asking is how did you go about solving that problem I mean, you're an engineer, so now you have a market problem where you have to inform the market, show your product, and place it in front of them. How do you do that? Because you are, as you started, you are a one-man show for a period of time. You are the collection guy, and you are the sales guy, and all of it. So, how do you do that? Uh, so, uh, actually, at that point of time, I was also confused. I knew one thing that you need to have your website, you need to have your social media page. That was there. but you know to getting people to visit your website to read about you and uh, yeah that is that is where the challenge is yeah. so um, and i was you know uh, very much hearing about seo 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 so that was in my mind uh, and i didn't had any much idea just i wanted ki mera koi seo kar de that was that kind of situation true so but uh, luckily for me i i had a friend uh, i have a friend who told me that uh, you know uh, SEO hota rahega you should focus on SEM first it is let me stop you and ask you a different question i think these are your tricks and they should remain with you uh question i'm asking is how did you sell your first liter of camel milk yeah so that, that is the I most also, difficult part right that's the most difficult part But yes i i remember when i had started you know got the packaging and everything done it was about uh, i think 20 days to the uh, Five days uh, when I sold my first uh, this thing, I still remember it was a family in Delhi. So and it was referred to me by one of the dietitians in uh, Delhi. So I was uh, means I had not stopped, you know, reaching out to dietitians, nutritionists, or doctors. So uh, she had suggested this thing, and that was my first order. You know, getting it uh, means doing the delivery myself. That was and first cash, you know, first revenue. Correct. That was very you know, proud feeling. Yes, of course, absolutely. Because I mean, SEO, SEM, all of this is interesting, but you still need to make the sale, right? I mean, all these things do is give you a funnel. You still have to still do the selling. I think that's the part that I find when a lot of people tell me about SEO, SEM is I'm like, yeah, but I still need to go sell, right? I still have to, you know, convince the customer. they have to write a po or you know give you an order you have to deliver the product and i have to give receive the cash then i have to pay my supplier right seo does not replace any of this <laughs> this is still you and i as humans have to do it yes so help us understand in this journey of you now developing a customer and a market what were some setbacks and how did you, more importantly how did you keep telling yourself i mean now of course 5 years looking back is easy but it wasn't easy when you were going through so i think the first setback which we had uh, means which i had felt was that we were, i initially it was only frozen milk so i understood that uh, people are if people are taking it for the medicinal value so it needs to be you know uh, without any additives preservatives and those okay. kind of things and to increase the shelf life you can you know deep freeze it and then supply you will get a maybe one month two month shelf life 
so the problem which we uh, faced was like when supplying in the delhi ncr region it was not a problem but say for example a customer from mumbai wants this thing uh, right. camel milk how to deliver it to them and, and uh, that was actually a very big problem for us we uh, we were not able to get the right uh, courier partners to do that because uh, see in the milk is the liquid category and uh, generally they are very uh, hesitant or they will just straight forward tell you a no and uh, after constant efforts you know i was visiting their offices uh, many courier companies then uh, finally people they uh, you know he agreed to what i was doing people actually they are, they were getting frozen milk across the means let's say 7 to 8 cities tier 1 and tier 2 cities 24 to 48 hours delivered in frozen okay. condition Nice. So that was, I think, uh, first setback which I had faced, and you know, after persistent efforts, finally, I means it was solved. So that Correct. was a, yeah. Correct. Now, while all this is going on, um, now there is a little bit of stereotyping here. Is uh, you are from a family and a genealogy that has always done things against the grain and created market. You know. the part that you are a marwadi uh, so i i have always felt i'm not a marwadi so i can say this that i've always felt that you know in your environment you get a lot of encouragement from your family and people around you but on the same token i also feel that you also get told to do what everybody else is doing because the chance of success is much higher you know when you do everything rather than doing something new so how are you, while all this is going on what is that thing going on in your family between you and people around you like what is that dynamic how did that play out uh see in general if anybody wants to do it like in 5 years back so may you do your job you you marry you settle uh, settle that's the whole idea correct um, means it's there in every indian household i would say Yeah. so that was there with me also and uh, like my father was saying that you know we will marry you off in one or two years and then you can start and uh, this camel milk you know it's very strange and they, everybody was like ye kya hai like <laughs> and uh, only my uh, grandfather he was like okay matlab it is okay if you feel it's a good business we are doing it sincerely you should do it it was not ki aap uh, camel milk is he is making cam- big thing out of camel milk it's, right. it's okay it's a business if you want to do it you sure. do it uh, that was means the clean support cleanest support initially i had got from, which i had got from my family was from my grandfather only lovely and eventually people fall in line i would say of course like uh, yeah after one year or two years yeah you are doing good yes that was a very good idea that was a very good decision you made so that was the thing and the main uh, thing was that i was not asking money from them that right. is also you know sometimes uh, it also plays a role uh, i had maintained my i would say living standard uh, in a way that i am able to manage on my own sure. because see till graduation if you are asking uh, means your parents are sponsoring your food your education and everything it is still acceptable and then if you want to start something and you become burden on anybody else so that is something you need to uh, everybody should think about it because you know you should have some savings which you can invest some time which you can invest and you are not dependent on anybody be it family be it friends that Correct. that actually help because they don't have uh, any save means like yes. i'm not asking from you so it's okay yeah so so we've covered the past we've we've gotten to the present uh hitesh from here where what is the future future uh as we speak uh, uh, i should tell you that we have launched donkey milk powder in the indian markets lovely and uh, we uh, i personally feel that uh, we should also come up with uh, breast milk human yeah. breast milk uh that's a long road i would say but that's what something in our minds and because uh, i had seen that uh, you know many young parents means uh, they today's lifestyle is such that you know they are facing some kind of complications and some other things and not able to get the right uh, milk and uh, for the babies best milk is humans milk 
for humans yeah. if i talk about the means six months old three months old just born babies so that is something which we are I, it is there in the back of my mind once uh, you know I, we have stabilized these things you, i cannot jump into too many things at the same time uh, it will create a mess so maybe after a few years a few months whatever that uh, thing is that we will come up with that thing and uh, we are also working on the formulations you know with camel milk powder with goat milk powder the infant formula the something for uh, maybe your body immunity for diabetes or something like that so that is there in the pipeline maybe uh, after a year or something we will be having something and uh, very good well on that note what i will say is that this has been a a very 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 fun discussion for me um because uh, there is a person who inspires me a lot he's a very uh, uh accomplished uh, fund manager in san francisco and he says invest in things that have not been done before right because things that have been done before have returns but you know it's you all know it but if you invest in things that have not been done before is when you write the future that's what you are doing you know camel milk uh, donkey milk powder even breast milk these are all uh, things that have not been probably done in an organized sector before one thing we also learned in a recent interview that will air after yours is uh, this person says there is the consumer exists we have to find how to connect the product to the consumer uh, and we have to find the consumer i mean consumer exists but he still have to find it and make the connection so uh, mm-hmm. and you've done a phenomenal job in uh, you know starting from selling your first liter to now you have a thriving business um and i think you are barely just scratching the surface right you are on the tip of the iceberg and uh, it excites us to have to a meet you and then get to know you and cultivate this relationship so thank you for making time and we wish you all the best and we will be following and will be a part of your success anyway so uh, very nice well thank you for making time thank you thank you for uh, having such a wonderful you know conversation this is not the last this is the first of many conversations that we're going to have in this